Hi everyone. It's so good to see you after so long a while. I'm just so glad to introduce you to a new series, a basic chemical pathology series. We do have a lot of topics under that, very, very interesting topics. And um, I'd like to start with water in this series. And usually um, while starting with water, I like to take the subject biological uses of water in the body, which you may think is a very simple subject. Let me tell you a story. You know, one of those days I was teaching in class, I wanted to introduce water and I asked the class, so what is or what are the biological uses of water in the body? And I got answers like, it's used to wash the car, it's used to cook food, it's used to wash clothes, clean up the kitchen, uh, wash everything, make, I'm like, wow. With every answer I got, my mind got blown away. And from that day, I like to take every little thing and make sure that, you know, my students understand what we are doing because that is what we came here to do, to learn. Uh, my name is Dr. Ia Ezebasi. I'm an associate professor of chemical pathology in the Department of Clinical Chemistry and Immunology, where I teach different subjects to medical students. So if you will please hold on, I will show you my first topic for this series. <laughs> All right. That's it. So this is the biological uses of water in the human study. What would I expect from you at the end of this session? I would expect that you should be able to define water and explain its importance in the body. Then you should also be able to describe the biological uses of water in the body. You should know that I appreciate you so much for all the support that you have been giving me. You know, we are more than 1,000 subscribers. The channel is growing. Wow, you guys are the very best. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, you know, share this video. If you have a problem, a question, something you don't understand or something you think we are doing well about, please just put it in the comment section. Even if you don't have time to write, you can, you know, put a smiley emoji for me. I would appreciate that. So what is water? Water is actually a liquid with a chemical formula H2O. It's usually a liquid that is clear, it's tasteless, it's odorless, and it's colorless. And it's a very important constituent of the human body. It's so important that 60% of, you know, the total weight of the adult human being is made up of water. That's so very, very important. So which means that if your body water is sucked out of you, you will not look different from stockfish. That's the new revelation. And then you should know that it also plays a vital role in the maintenance of body homeostasis. When we talk about body homeostasis, we're talking about the different things, you know, that happen in the body to keep the body tip-top shape, to keep the body working, to keep the body healthy, you know. All those processes are called homeostasis. So what then are the uses of water in the human body? When you look at um, unicellular organisms like uh, paramecium, euglena, you will find out that they are surrounded by water, external water, and that water forms like a kind of medium from which those unicellular organisms can get their nutrients, get their oxygen, and also after ingesting and digesting, respiration and all that occurs in the body, that water that surrounds them also forms a medium for them to get rid of their waste products. So for us human beings, the body water that we have inside of us provides that kind of constant external environment for our body cells where they can pick nutrients, they can pick oxygen, and after all their body processes, they can get rid of the waste products 
that are being produced. It also, because water is a kind of like universal solvent, it kind of forms an aqueous medium for biological reactions in the body, all right? Why we call it a universal solvent is that it has the ability to dissolve a variety of molecules. So because of that, that capability enables it to serve as a medium for reactions, whether anabolic reactions, whether catabolic reactions, all right? And sometimes the water molecule even participates in those reactions. For instance, reactions where you find this include glycogenolysis, the biosynthesis of ATP, biosynthesis of phospholipids, and non-essential amino acids in the body. Thirdly, it is a major component of body fluids, whether you are talking about synovial fluid, whether you're talking about amniotic fluid, amniotic fluid, this right here is amniotic fluid where the baby is suspended, whether you're talking about aqueous and ventral humors that you find in the eyes, saliva, blood, and lymphatic fluid, it's a major component. <coughs> Excuse me. So it also has some regulatory functions because it helps in the regulation of osmotic pressure, blood pressure, body temperature, acid base balance, and as well as electrolyte balance. So you can see that water is very, very necessary. Wow, it also helps in uh, transportation because of that, its ability to be a universal solvent. It helps in transportation, whether you're talking about nutrients, whether you're talking about waste products, are you talking about drugs or their metabolites? Are you talking about transporting cells like blood cells, sperm cells? Are you talking about transportation of plasma proteins? Name it in the body. Water forms, you know, aids in the transportation of uh, these things. When you talk about excretion and elimination of toxic metabolic weights, water is heavyweight because it helps us to get rid of toxic metabolites and waste products through the urine, through sweat, through feces, you know? So you get rid of water in those ways or get rid of waste products in those ways, all right? Then it also quenches thirst. Talking about Test all these videos. I'm thirsty. I need to rehydrate. <laughs> so drinking water helps you to quench thirst, thereby preventing dehydration. And then when you drink water, it helps to maintain the turgidity of body cells because if you're dehydrated, if you look at a person that is dehydrated, if you look at the skin, the skin is kind of like dry, wrinkled, and all that. That is because the cells have lost their turgidity. But when you drink water, the cell becomes full, you know, and turgid, and it helps you to look fresh. Okay? Then water also moistens the body, uh, you know, the skin, the nose, the throat, the eyes, everywhere. So when you take water, it's a form of moisturization, you know, for your skin and helps you also to look fresh. It also helps to maintain skin elasticity. That is why if you look at somebody that is dehydrated and you pick up the person's skin, it's not elastic. All right? Well, I'm highly dehydrated, so my skin is very, very elastic. Then it also helps to lubricate mucous membranes in the gastrointestinal and respiratory tracts. That is why sometimes when you talk for a long time, like I have, you will find out that your throat gets dried and you want to drink water, you know, to lubricate it. Then also there are other uses like water acts as the lubricants in the joints. I've already said that. And um, it also helps in mastication. When you're chewing your food, the saliva helps to mix up the food in your mouth and then it goes down to your stomach and digestion takes place. All these you know, processes need water. Very, very important. So 
with this few points of mind, you will know that water is very, very important. But I'm going to give you an assignment before I go. I want to, to look for more uses of water in the body. When I get to class, I will look at what you have and grade it. So having come to the end, I want to say you are my MVPs. I don't have any other person like you. So please learn to subscribe, learn to like, learn to comment on the videos. I want to also say thank you very much to fppt.com for their slides and using their free templates. And those templates are like awesome and they're free. So thank you so much for the use of your templates. Bye. Till I see you another time, take care and bye.